For 30 years, I've been a professional filmmaker and fine art photographer. My shows and art have been exhibited on HBO Cinemax, Showtime Australia, B Sky B Great Britain, USA Channel, DirecTV, in galleries, and much more worldwide. These days, I own fine art photography galleries, and I'm on a mission to inspire people to reconnect with nature and the wilderness through photography. I'm Gary Orona, and this is my wild world. Hello, Gary here. Happy New Year. Hope your holiday season was fantastic and you didn't get snowed in to the extent that you couldn't get out into the great outdoors. Tabitha and I spend a lot of time in the great outdoors. It is our passion. And I thought today, since we're stuck inside, it's a little bit of a rainy, dreary day outside. I would talk about Barrier Canyon style pictographs. These are ancient Native American rock art panels. Ancient Native American rock art panels um, are composed of either petroglyphs or pictographs. Petroglyphs are carved or etched into the rock surface. That's their definition, petroglyphs. Pictographs are painted on. Pigments are created and uh, natural brushes are created. Sticks, sometimes hands can be used just to press the paint on. But in the case of Barrier Canyon style pictographs, of course, they are pictographs, therefore they are painted on. These are the most haunting, mysterious, and mesmerizing forms of Native American rock art there are. Some of these panels are thousands of years old. We're not sure exactly how old they are. Some of the estimates are up to 7,000 BC, so that would be 9,000 years old, potentially. Some think they're more like 1,200, 1,500 years somewhere in their late archaic. Regardless, these are haunting figures, ghost-like apparitions, mythological characters, aliens, We don't know what they are, but you can certainly conjure up in your own mind, your own stories of what you think that they are. Where Tabitha and I are in Green River, Utah, we are sort of at the center of the only area in North America where we find this particular style, the Barrier Canyon style of pictographs. And there aren't a lot of sites, and so they're they're rare. Um, probably 300 plus, but not probably not too much more than that. We visit, and, and over the years I have uh, visited probably I don't know a hundred more than a hundred of these sites. Some of them very very well known, and some of them we're convinced we just might be the only modern folks to have ever stumbled across them because of where they are, how remote they are, how hidden they are. And when we're talking about these canyons, these are labyrinths. These are mazes that you could spend multiple lifetimes and never, ever explore every nook and cranny. It's just impossible. It's vast. So Barrier Canyon pictographs, these haunting, mesmerizing, enigmatic figures, anthropomorphic and zoomorphic figures that we see painted on these walls are stunning. We don't know who these people were that did this. How wonderful is that? I love the mystery. I love when we don't know the answers. Sometimes when the mystery remains and we don't know the answers, it conjures up vivid and wild imaginations. And certainly with these pieces, these ghost-like figures, we really get a strong sense of that. And I want to talk about this one particular panel. This is Dream World Spirit. It's one of my uh, master works, and it is uh, what I call uh, one of my only one pieces. It's on the website, savageterritory.com, savageterritory.com. And I have it in the only one section, which means that I do a couple of artist proofs, two usually, and only one final piece one yes one of one and the reason i did it with this particular piece although this piece is a well visited site it is known and i've been there dozens of times very easy access you can literally drive up to this thing it's within about a half an hour of our place in green river utah but 
it remains one of the most mesmerizing of these particular kinds of panels that there are. It is absolutely fabulous. So what I did was I stitched together five across the top and then five across the bottom here. And with a little bit of overlap, so I got clean lines. And then when I brought it into post-production, the first thing I realized was is there was tons of vandalism on this. Because it's so accessible, it has been just vandalized. There's graffiti all over it. And I didn't realize, realize the extent to it because the panel's up high and you can't really get up too close to it. But once I punched it up in post-production, I found, oh, it was terrible. It took me three hours to remove via... Uh, post-production work on the image, the vandalism that had been done to this site. And I wanted to clean the panel up in such a way that it would look pure. Now, it's not going to look exactly like it did in, in its original creation because it's, of course, weathered over thousands of years, perhaps as many as, as we said before, as, as could be eight, 9,000 years. We don't really know. Now, to give you a sense of scale, this guy over here is probably about the size of a average modern male. So these are huge images. Some of the images have no arms, perhaps they're spirit people, perhaps they're holy men, maybe they're mythological characters. We don't know, but they're haunting. These big, huge eyes that we see in these things are just mesmerizing. And I can't really explain enough the feeling you get when you when you witness this panel. And this is what I wanted to, to create in an image. Now, this is going to be a huge image. So the file size of this, because of the stitch down here, if you look at this, is 726 megabytes, and that's native. So it'll print 90 inches wide plus with no loss in detail. And that's why I did the stitch, because I wanted to punch in here and see all this detail. The thing I really wanted to talk about the most, with particular, particularly with these panels, is that when you look at these panels, what happens is, is the more you just allow your, your thoughts to be objective and allow yourself to sink into the image, what happens is, is details emerge that you didn't see before. I have seen this panel over and over and over again. And to this day, I find details and images buried and layered underneath in this thing I didn't see a year ago. It's as if it has a life of its own. It's as if it has a certain spirit to it. And these things actually emerge when you really allow yourself to see them. I want to punch in over to these little guys here. They're probably antelope, pronghorn. They might be deer. I don't know. We don't really know for sure. But these guys are so small and so faint that on first viewing, I didn't even know that they were there. Now I'm going to zoom out. You can see how buried they are. They're these little teeny guys in here. And unless you're weighing in on them with great detail, they're invisible. They vanish. And as we punch in, we see more detail, things that we didn't see before. It is really something else, this panel. These strange characters, we have no idea what they are. What is this guy? This look, guy looks like a phoenix or a rainbird or something. I can throw my interpretation on them, but they're not real. And no one knows. We don't know. These have been lost to time. It's a great mystery. These uh, figures could be, as I said before, anything. They could be, it could have been the intent of the artist to um, portray something in a, in a visual sense that's um, historical. Could have been mythological characters as part of their cosmology. Could be, well, for those who are out there in the extreme edges, aliens. <laughs> we don't know. So those ancient aliens theorists will have a, a good time with this one. But my point being is that it's, it's the more you punch in to see the details in these things, you, you become more captivated by them. It's almost as if the artist's intent worked, were captured, and we sense the mystery. And I love the mystery. It's a mystery that is a reflection of life. And I think that these embody that in a way that we just don't see in any other kinds of ancient rock art panels. As you can see, and I move around and look at these things, you know, there's a hand on this chest here. It's gorgeous. The detail in the lines in the chest, the uh, chest cavity there. This over here could be eyes and a mouth. Maybe it's just the a decorative design on particular, with this robe or whatever this thing is on the body here. We don't know. But we can certainly guess these hooded figures, mysterious, haunting, almost dark feeling. Maybe they're not dark feeling. Maybe they're benevolent. We don't know. But this panel certainly printed at 90 inches or greater um, 
You could spend a lifetime every morning just staring at this thing and, and finding new elements buried in this that uh, you won't actually see if you go to the site because I've gone through and I've cleaned it up and fixed it. And by the way, last thing, um, I don't throw my interpretation on this. So what I do is I go in and I only clean up and dodge and burn and things and bring up those sections that I absolutely know are there. And I use some software to allow me to alter the colors in such a way that I can find layers that are actually invisible to the human naked eye. So there are components of this image that if you go to this site, they are invisible to us. Our, our, our vision is limited in certain aspects and in the red spectrum, things fade and they're still there just faded. And so I'm able to pull some of those things up and then I accentuate them in such a way that it brings them back to life. It's like the ghosts coming back from the dead. This is dream world spirits. It's fabulous. And it's just one of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images that Tabitha and I have been able to produce in these fantastic, mystical, magical locations that surround us here. All right, so the usual subscribe stuff, follow me on Twitter. We're gonna start doing a whole bunch of these videos explaining shots and explaining details behind them. And I think it'll actually help bring them to life in a way that you hadn't perhaps thought of before. One last thing, aha, I almost forgot. <laughs> Scepter, look at this. This is wonderful. See this scepter we see on this? So the scepter is typically a device, a rod, a staff, a stick um, that is only allowed to be in the hands of a chieftain or a wise man or a holy man or someone of importance. We see these in cultures, ancient cultures all over the world, ancient Egypt, Sumer, South America, and certainly here. And I think it's very interesting that we see a lot of the same symbols and images and motifs in these ancient, archaic, maybe pre, maybe it's paleo images. And we see these same things around the world. Is it built into our DNA that that's just what we produce as humans or was there contact? We don't know. We don't know at this point, but it remains mysterious. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Lots more of this stuff coming up. Don't miss them. And I'll explain and show you how I create some of these images and what some of them might mean and certainly give you a sense of the creativity involved here. Have a great day. Have a beautiful week. We'll uh, talk to you really soon.